Welcome. In one of our previous videos, I had explained how to calculate average employee tenure using Microsoft Excel. And one of our viewers had commented that while following the same steps in Google Sheets, it doesn't really work um, because there are some differences between Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets in terms of features. And so in this video, I'm going to explain how to calculate the average employee tenure using Google Sheets. So now what I have here is a, a new spreadsheet and all I have is the input data where I have the list of uh, employees, their IDs, the names, the start date of each employee, and then the status. So what we're going to calculate is average of all active employees. So average tenure of all active employees. And tenure is nothing but how long has the employee been employed at the company. So we need to know the start date and we also need to know today's date. So we can calculate how long each employee has been employed. And once we know for each employee, then we can do an average. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll start with just you know uh, calculating today's date. So I'm going to have to say today. I'm going to type equals today, enter. So today is nothing but today, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. That is the function which returns today's date. And the date format obviously can be different. So I'm just going to convert this into one of the more common formats, which makes it clear that it's day, month, and year. Today is 28th of July, 2023. Now, this is good because tomorrow when we open the sheet, it'll be 29th July and our tenure calculation that we're going to do will still continue to be accurate as of any day that we're looking at the data. Now, we have this today's date. Now, let's go and start calculating the tenure for each employee. So let's take Adams. So the way we're going to do is write a function called uh, date diff. The date diff needs the start date, which is C4 cell for Adams, comma, the end date will be today's date. And we already calculated in the cell F1, but I'm going to put um, dollar signs in front of F1 because today's date is not going to change. It's always going to be in this one cell and say comma. Now, the date diff function requires us to specify how do I want to calculate the difference? So is it in months or years? So I'm going to do months by typing in M. We are informing the function that calculate the number of months difference. So I'm going to close it, hit OK or hit enter. And now I don't want to autofill. Let's just do it for one employee first fully and then we'll fill it for other employees. Now date diff, start date, end date, number of months. It gives me 127 months. And let's say um, now I want to convert it into years. So I'm going to divide it by 12. And now it gives me in decimals. So I want to now round it because I don't need all that precision. So I'm going to just say round. Uh, round of this value, comma, how many digits do I want after the decimal? I need one. So hit. Now it says. 10.6 years because we already divided it by 12. So now the months got converted into years. So it's 10.6 years. Now, this is great, but if I click and drag, see what's going to happen is when there is no employees, it will give you a very large number because it's thinking the start date is zero. And so it's calculating it. So what we want to do is put an if condition and say if the start date, which is cell C4 equals blank, then give me blank. Otherwise, give me this value. And so close parenthesis. Just, um, I'll explain one more time after I apply this formula and now drag it. Now you see that it's not calculating anything for all these records. What I want to do um, is make sure that the solution we are developing will still work when you enter new employees into this data set. It is not only for these 10 employees. Tomorrow you'll have new employees start and you wanna make sure that the solution you're doing is uh, scalable and it's automatically accommodating new employees. So one suggestion I will give you is you always mark your data. Um, so for example, let's say I wanna go all the way to 103 rows um, and I'm just going to mark the borders at least visually tells me that 
these are all going to be my employee data and i want this formula that we wrote applied to all of these records or rows so i'm just going to click and drag all the way until row 103 so why 103 this is like 100 employees now if in your case if you need for 200 employees 300 employees you can expand it however long you want i'm starting i'm stopping with 100 uh, just for this demo so now i have this formula written and let me just explain again this formula if the start date is blank then put blank otherwise if it is not blank then go and calculate for me the date difference from the start date to today in months then divide it by 12 to convert it into years and round it to one digit so that the precision is just one decimal and then so it gives me 10.60 years 9.3 years five years and so on so now i have calculated for every employee that tenure so now it's time to calculate the average tenure so i'm going to do average tenure in years first okay so i'm going to do that in the cell g5 i'm going to do use the function called average if i'll explain you why i'm not using average and i'm using average if because average if allows you to put a condition on your averages so i'm going to say for all the status values um and i can i can 100 so no 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 three actually so all the employees status values i am putting a condition that i needed to say active so double quotes active double quotes uh in your data if let's say it's not active inactive if it is employed not employed or yes or no or whatever it is just choose the exact text that represents the condition that you want to apply and then put a comma and now i want to say what am i averaging so i'm averaging the tenure values right so i can type in e4 colon e103 now it will average all the values in this range i'm going to say close parenthesis and then hit enter now it has given me the average so if i want just like before round it to only one digit so now it's giving me 10.6 is the average so let's say for example uh, let's test it out i'm going to add another employee um put my name i'm going to say this is the start date and immediately you saw that the tenure got calculated here because we put the formula already but you didn't see that the average get impacted because we have not said anything about the status so as soon as i put active you will see that the average tenure changed um, so it's working it is considering new employees uh, that we are adding into the average calculation so everything is good um, so this is a very simple formula average if function and we are rounding it with one digit that's it now for the last part of this uh, video i want to um, show how you can display this in months and years so let's say for example i want to um, just get the years part uh, what do i mean by that so 9.6 years so we have nine full years and a partial year right um, and you can display this as 9.6 years uh, but you know uh, we often refer to tenure in years and months or months and not just uh, uh, 9.6 right so 9.6 is actually you know how many uh, months after the ninth year and that is what it'll be good if we can display it in years and months let's first get the year part of it so it's very straightforward there's a function called in which will round our 9.6 right i just selected the cell g5 because this is where we um have the calculated value of 9.6 i do an int function around it it gives me nine very straightforward so nine full years great now let's calculate the months part of it that is the remaining right so there's a function called mod where you can select again 9.6 comma i am going to do one and this is basically you know whatever is remaining 0.6 uh, will be the result and this again is in years so 0.6 years 
And I want this in months. So I'm going to multiply that by 12. And now that gives me 7.2, 7.2 months. And if I don't want this to be partial, I can just round it to seven months. So what this means is nine years and seven months is actually the average tenure of empl active employees in this data set. Um, in order to make this, you know, look um, as a, you know, concatenated string. So what I'm going to do is years, comma, months. Now, how do I do it? We're going to just do, um, there are many ways, um, like concatenate is a function. We can also use ampersand, which is a, an operator. Uh, let's use concatenate. So I'm going to select this cell V8, which gives me the number nine, comma, and then double quotes, I can say space years, comma. I'm going to select G10, which gives me the number seven. And then comma, double quotes, space, once, double quotes. Now it gives me nine years and seven months. So one thing to um, keep in mind here is that this is a text. When you concatenate, it becomes a text value, and you cannot operate any more numerical operations on the cell, but it is good from a display perspective, nine years and seven months. And if I want to just add nine years and seven months or something like that, I can do that very easily. So how you want to display the output to the end user, you have more flexibility there, but keep in mind that now it is a text value and it's no longer a numeric value. Um, on the other hand, the number nine, number seven, number 9.6, all of these are numeric values that we can use for further calculations if needed, but this becomes a text value for display purposes. So hope, um, hopefully this video was helpful. Um, so keep in mind that there are many ways to do the same thing. If I am, I, I intentionally avoided using a lot of named ranges in, in this video. Um, there are ways to use named ranges and make it a lot more dynamic and scalable. Uh, but for this uh, video demo, I just set a limit of 100 employees and made sure that the uh, calculations will continue to be accurate and work automatically as long as you have 100 employees. If you want to expand it uh, later, to more than 100 employees, you would have to come and update the formulas. You would have to update these values manually. So that is the downside of this approach, uh, but this is simpler. It works for most cases, uh, but if I'm building something to accommodate any um, changes in the future, I would have used uh, named ranges. If that is a solution that you're looking for, please post them in the comments below, and I will be happy to do another video using named ranges. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, if you'd like me to do a video on any topic, please put them in the comments. I'll be happy to create a video that you will find useful. Thank you so much. See you soon in the next video.